and I am the program director for the Northwest chapter of the American Parkinson Disease Association, or APDA for short, since that is a mouthful. So thank you for joining us today for our presentation about the five W's of home care and home health. I am joined here by Sean D'Amelio. Good morning, Sean. Good morning. Um, I'm going to tell you more about Sean right before we begin our conversation. Um, and, but I also want to introduce who else I'm joined on screen with. Um, Kirsten Richards is my colleague at APDA Northwest, and she is the Director of Development. And so before we begin, um, Kirsten's going to tell you a little bit more about APDA. So tell us, what is this organization, Kirsten? Thanks, Jen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, APDA is, in a nutshell, here to help people impacted by Parkinson's disease live their best life with PD. We are part of a, the largest grassroots network dedicated to fighting Parkinson's disease and assisting the estimated 1 million Americans living with PD. Our Northwest chapter is part of their grassroots ne network and our mission is to provide outstanding patient services and education programs like this one elevate public awareness about PD, and support research to ultimately put an end to this disease. We're working every day to put ourselves out of a job. As a local chapter of a national organization, we work to assess local needs and raise funds to provide innovative programs and services. We like to say APDA's mission is twofold, to provide help for today through our programs and services, and hope for tomorrow by funding critical research. Individual donors are critical to the support of APDA's work as corporations and sponsors are tightening their belts during this uncertain time. We're looking more and more towards individuals to help cover the cost of our programs. I'd like to thank those of you who donated when you registered. We really appreciate your support and every gift, no matter the size, makes an immediate impact. If you missed out on this opportunity and are in a position to do so, please consider making a donation. You can do so on our website at apdaparkinson.org slash Northwest, and Jen's gonna add that link to the chat, um, or give us a call. We always are here to chat. Um, this program today is part of our monthly Take Control series. It's being recorded and will be archived on our YouTube channel, which is where you can also find a lot of our previous pro presentations. And I'm going to turn it back over to Jen. <clears throat> You're muted, Jen. Proper etiquette. Let's unmute myself. Well, hello. Um, so if you have joined us for our previous take controls, this one is a little different. Today, we do not have a PowerPoint presentation. Today's program is going to be an interactive conversation between the three of us and you, the audience. So through this conversation, you will learn about the difference between home care and home health, who can benefit from them, how to access them, how to pay for them, why you would want to use them, mm -hmm. and you will have the opportunity to ask questions throughout the program. So let me give you instructions on how that will work. Take a look at the bottom of your screen and you'll see three options there. There's a button for chat, there is a button to raise your hand, and there is a button for Q&A. If you would like to pose your question by typing your question, you can do so by clicking on the Q&A button. If you would like to ask a question by speaking, just like a radio call-in show, you can raise your virtual hand and then we will unmute you and you can ask your question. You can use the chat for general comments or to message one of us privately. So before we begin, I am going to launch a poll to find out who is on the call. Um, so you are going to see a, oh, relaunch. You are gonna see a poll. So who is participating in this webinar? There may be more than one of you. So if there are, check all that apply. So I'm gonna give you just a moment. There will be a couple polls throughout the um, time that we're speaking today. But just click your, your results and I will then share who is on the call.
All right. Everybody's clicking. All right, so I'm going to share the results with everybody. Um, so we have a good mix of people with Parkinson's, people who are care partners of someone with Parkinson's, some family members, and other community members. Um, so thank you for doing that. That just gives us an idea of who is participating. So we'll use another poll later on in our program. So let me start by introducing Sean. Um, Sean has started her is just started her 13th year as Director of Business Development for With a Little Help Home Care. She is currently the President of the Washington Home Care Association. She sits on the Evergreen Health Foundation Board of Trustees and is an advisor for End of Life Washington. Sean recently participated in a coalition to create the Palliative Care Roadmap, which I will be sharing with you today. Well, I'll share with you in the post-event email, actually. Um, she has a tremendous amount of knowledge in this field, and I'm excited she can be here today. Thank you so much for joining us, Sean, to talk about this important topic. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. You know, With a Little Help has been a partner with the American Parkinson's Disease Association for many years now. We value our relationship with you, and, and um, we've done a lot of education around Parkinson's, and we've had a good partnership with you guys. We're really happy to be part of this today. So. Thank you for having us, having You're me. Well, yes, absolutely. You're welcome. And thank you for being a part of our community. Sean's a great connector and has so much knowledge in so many areas. So um, I'm so happy you can be here today. Thank so you. let's start with uh, why do you think it's important to uh, differentiate between home care and home health? Well, I'm, I'll give just a little example, a little story. I had an uncle in a hospital and he was getting discharged and my sister-in-law who was in charge of him um, i said well he should have some home care benefits coming to him through the va and she said oh it's all right we've got home health coming and i said no no it's not home health it's home care like he should have some home care so we had a conversation that happened around getting the va to prescribe him some home care before he left the hospital. Well, that didn't happen before he left the hospital and he was going home with home health, but she continued to think it was really home care. And when she realized that they were only going to be coming for short periods of time throughout the week and he really needed 24 seven care, she called me and said, Hey, we need home care. And, and it just started the paddle ro rolling and it, and it's been a many a conversation with many professionals and many patients who do not understand the difference between home care and home health. And to be honest with you, I didn't understand it for many years. I didn't really understand the difference, um, but I've gotten much clearer. And I think just some education around the difference helps people take advantage of what's accessible to them and the benefits of using home health. So that's why I feel like it's really important. I, I, my mother-in-law just this last month was in the hospital and I had the same exact conversation with my brother-in-law. The conversation was, well, we, ha we, don't, we have home health coming in. I go, I know, but she's gonna need home care, right? She needs, she needs more care than just somebody coming for 30 minutes a couple times a week. So it's just a lot of education around it. And I, I think it's really helpful when people understand the difference so that they can take advantage of it. Yeah, for sure. Well, and it fits with kind of our mission of like education really is empowerment. The more that you know, the more that you can tackle what comes at you. So having this conversation, I think is really important. So I'm going to launch another poll. Um, so I just want to get an idea of who has, uh, wait, I got to figure out how to do this poll thing. This is new to me. Um, so I want to get an idea of if you in the audience have ever used home care. So um, have you ever used home care? Answer the question yes, no, or no, but I'm here because I want to learn more about it. So okay, so um, the majority of you have not used home care. Um, oh wait, I said home care, not home health. 
That's all right. Now do the home health one. Okay. I'm going to relaunch a different poll. So this is home care that you just answered. So I'm going to relaunch the one about home health. Tech oh, shoot. And pulling. Don't ask that one. Technical difficulties. I'm sorry, folks. Um, so we are launching the poll. Have you ever used home health? Hopefully these are not, you know, these are not scientific polls. So just give us an idea. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so yeah. pretty similar results. Um, a little more folks have used home health than had used home care. So, um, so that's great. We have a an audience sort of of newbies. So this is great. Great. So, um, let's start with what is home health. So. Home health is usually ordered by a physician at the time of dis discharge from a hospital or a skilled nursing um, community. A skilled nursing is somewhere where somebody goes to rehab, basically. They go after they've had a heart attack or they've had a stroke or they need to get stronger and they don't have the ability to go home. Um, patients often underutilize this benefit um, that is typically covered 100% by Medicare or other insurances with no exhaustion, so long as you're meeting the three requirements. And the three requirements are, there's a skilled need for a nurse, physical therapist, or a speech therapist. The patient is home, that's number one. You have to have a need for one of those three things. The patient, number two is the patient is homebound, meaning it's difficult to leave your home unassisted. You can still go out for medical appointments or necessities, but you can't be going up to see the tulips on in the spring or taking a fall drive. It's you're really homebound. It's hard for you and difficult for you to leave. And the third is that the doctor actually orders the home health orders. Right now during COVID, they've put a temporary order in that says that an ARNP can order a home health order or um, a physician's assistant can order a home health, which is really good. And those are two of the things that we kind of hope stick after COVID because it's great to have access to those and easier access to those. Um, patients and family members can also request orders from their for home health from their doctor or physician or their PA or their nurse um, if um, there's been a, a level of change in the function uh, or experienced an ex um, exacerbation, I always say that word wrong, so I say that right now, um, of their diagnosis. So if you're experiencing changes, you're experiencing falls or um, your, your level of um, your speech is changing and you think that you could benefit from home health, you can request that from your doctor to write an order for that. And that's a really good thing because what you're trying to do is prevent, you're on the front end trying to prevent a hospitalization. We don't want to go to the hospital. This is, this, this is to help you get stronger. It's to help you prevent falls and repeated trips to the ER so that you're, you know, so it's always good to discuss a referral for home health from your doc, with your doctor. Home health actually provides physical therapy, which is different kinds of exercises to strengthen your muscles and your, your, your core muscles to get you back up and walking. Or I just heard a great story yesterday where somebody had really been told they wouldn't walk again and they brought physical therapy in and they were walking again, which is really a great outcome for physical therapy. Occupational therapy. Occupational therapy can come in and help a, help see where you need grab bars. What is it that you need in the shower? You need grab bars here. What level, what height, where? Make sure that they're just not using a towel bar that's gonna come out of the wall when they go to stand up from the toilet. Do they need a toilet seat riser? Those are occupational therapy. What are the hazards in your home? Do you need a ramp into your home? Those are the things that can be helped with by an occupational therapist. A speech therapist. If you've had a stroke or your speech or with Parkinson's, your, your voice has gotten softer, a speech therapist might be able to help you with those things. A visiting nurse. And a visiting nurse can help with all kinds of different things kind of underneath that section, which is 
uh, wound care or new diagnosis education or um, new medic medication regimen, which I know is very important with Parkinson's. So they can do a lot of teaching and training on medication, medication regimen, regimens. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't talk. Um, they can also do ostomy and colostomy care, as well as infusion, work with the infusion companies, which is really great. There's also a social worker, which can be a wonderful, wonderful resource. And you can get a home, home care assistant to help you bathe. So those visits though, those visits when they're coming into your home, those are only lasting for, for instance, you might get a nurse once a week and you might have a physical therapist coming in two or three times a week, maybe an occupational therapist once, but they're only coming in for short visits, maybe 30 minutes with you. They're not there all day. So if you're someone who's needing a little more help throughout the day, that's not what this is. This is just therapies to help you reach your goal, whatever that goal is. And typically those orders are written around for 30 days and then they re reassess what those orders are and how, how that's happening. Do you have so any not questions? Unlimited. So it's not unlimited. Like it, they're, they're really looking at a goal that, you know, you, you are, you need help with this section. We have a couple of visits that you're authorized for and hopefully you're meeting those needs. And so it's not ongoing. You're not going to have home health for a year. Right. Right. Yeah. It, they, they measure it by, are you, they set a goal and it's a good question to ask them, like, how are they going to measure that? How are they going to know if you're succeeding? It's a good question to ask the physical therapist. How will we know if I'm succeeding at what we're doing? What, how are you setting this goal? So their goal might be that you can sit down and stand up from the toilet by yourself, or that you can get in and out of a chair, transfer from one thing to the other by yourself. That might be the goal. And then once that goal is reached, um, then you'll be taken off of home health services. But you can, as long as you are progressing and you know what the goal is and you're progressing, they will keep you on home health. The goal is to get you to your goal. The goal is to get you to your goal. Okay, I like great. That. Yeah. yeah. So a um, you can get home health when you're after like an incident where you've been discharged from a hospital or rehab, or you can talk to your physician where there's not an incident, but you see changes in um, how you're functioning in your daily life and need need some assistance on improving that. So you can do you can request those two things. So then, who does the home health? Um, how do you how do you choose who is coming into your home? How, what does that look like? Right. So I would say there's three types of home health. There's home health that comes in under a hospital, for instance, like Evergreen Health has home health that will come out. Um, they have a section of their whole big organization that's home health and they specialize in that. Then there's companies like Carriage Home Health. That's one of our partners. Carriage Home Health comes in and just provides that care, only home health, that's all they do. They don't hospitalize, they don't have a skilled nursing, they only provide home health in your home. And then there's, a, and that's, they're all covered by Medicare or insurances. And then there is a private pay home health. And those are also smaller companies. Um, I, I have a couple that we work with that will take private pay. So for instance, if home health said, okay, you're done, we're cutting you off, but you still want to pay privately to have somebody, a physical therapist come in and continue to work with you, you could do that. Okay, great. So it sounds like a certain amount is covered by insurance, depending on your plan, right? Typically 100%. Typically 100%, okay. Yeah. And you said something earlier, not on this call, but when we were talking about this presentation about the underutilization of home health. You wanna comment a little bit on that? Yeah, it's, you know, what, what happens is because people don't understand exactly what they're getting with home health and who pays for it, when they're going home with home health, they say, no, we don't need anybody to come to our home. No, we don't need anybody to come to our home. And so they will turn down home health, which is unfortunate because that, when, when you bring in home health and home care, uh, well, let me back up one step. If you're getting discharged from a health 
a, a hospital visit or a skilled nursing, typically there's a very high readmission rate within the first 30 days. So we find that if you bring in home care and home health in that first 30 days, the readmission rate, the chances that you're gonna go back to the hospital are cut immensely in half. And that's a great thing. You, it's to prevent you from going back. It's to keep you independent. Um, sometimes think, people think it's taking their independence away. It's to keep you independent, to strengthen you, get you stronger. It, it, yeah, so. Okay, great. I get on my soapbox about that because I'm like, what do you mean she turned down home health? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So I want to remind the audience that if you have questions, um, please raise your hand <clears throat> or um, type your question in the Q&A. Um, so is there any, as you're looking for, um, who's going to provide your home health, um, what, would you say that there's certain questions you should ask these, these companies, or should you let your physician just say, hey, you should use this service, or what's the best way to access this if you're going to be, be wanting to do that? Yeah, you can choose your own home health company as long as it's within your plan. So first find out who, who is on your plan. There might be certain companies. And for instance, I had referred somebody to my mother-in-law, but she wasn't actually, they weren't actually on her plan, so she couldn't use them. So we went to plan B, which was also a great option, but it, it, you have to make sure they're on your plan. That's the main thing. If it's gonna be covered, you wanna make sure they're in your plan. Um, I, I say it's always worth research, doing a little of your own research just to see if they're a good, a good referral from a friend who was happy with a, a home health company, or if you've used a home health company before that you're happy with. You know, if you had Evergreen Home Health in there before and you were happy with them, use them again, request them again. You can request the same physical therapist if you want, if they're still there. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Anything else that you want to say about home health? Or are there any questions from the audience specifically about home health? Because we're going to move on to home care. And of course, folks can ask questions um, as we go along with home care as well. So now that we've covered home health and um, let's talk about home care. Let's talk about what is home care. Yeah, I am going to say just one last little thing oh, on of home course. health, which is you know, home being, it's a little bit like home care. Home is where you live. That could be in assisted living. It could be in your own private home. It could be in an independent living. It, wherever you live is where home health will follow you. So just keep that in mind. Home is where you are. Home is where you are. Yeah, and there home was another home. question which actually does, that comes to my mind that does, have to do with your home and also has to do with home care. What if these, what if somebody's coming into your home that you're not super comfortable with? Can you fire home health once you have them come in? Yeah, I think it's a conversation, you know, and I always like to say it's, it's a teaching is, you know, is it a teaching moment? Is it something you could talk to their supervisor and say, well, they were kind of rude, but they were really good at the physical therapy part. Or is it just a complete, I can't get along with this person. I don't, didn't care for them. But I always try to say it takes a while to build a relationship. It, the first person that walks in the door, you're, you're not feeling good. They're trying to get you to do something that might be challenging for you. Try to look at the bigger picture. It takes a bit to build the relationship. So you, you can call, but ask yourself, is this a teaching moment? Is this just something that we can get past? Or is this something that I just can't not deal with? Right. Well, and home health, like home care, which I think you're going to get into, um, there are licensure standards. And so there's safety standards and regulations right. and background checks right. and things that they have to go through before because they are coming into your home. You want to be comfortable with them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So let's move on to home care. So okay. talk to me about what is home care. Okay, well, let's, let's just break it down a little bit. I'm going to ask everybody that's on the call today, type into the chat box some of the things you did this morning before getting on this call. We're gonna give that just a second. What did you do this morning before you got on the call? Just type it in the chat.
got dressed, read emails, Anybody else? Showered, fixed breakfast. I drank coffee. I made coffee. Yep. Dressed. I snuggled with my dog. <laughs> snuggled with your dog. Went for a five mile walk. Nice job, Bob. Fed the birds. That's good. The, these things are these things are what are considered, all considered kind of activities of daily living. And I, I'm gonna break it down just a little bit, which is the seven activities of daily living are bathing, dressing, grooming, feeding. And this is sometimes just part of what's considered by insurances, incontinence care, toileting, transfers, and ambulation. That's activities of daily living. Um, what are called incidental activities of daily living are more of the things like transportation, shopping, cooking, managing med medications, light, light housekeeping, laundry, using the phone, managing finances. Those are called the incidental activities of, of daily living. And what home care services can provide are basically anything that would help you that you would do on a daily basis. So for instance, um, engagement. Engagement is really a big piece. And right now it's a really big piece. The more people are isolated. Um, as, as we age, we seem to isolate a little more and, and loneliness sets in. And that can be a really challenging place to be. And engagement's very important for your overall health and well-being. I, I liked, um, one of my caregivers was just telling me a story that she was giving a, one of the gentlemen that she cared for a, a shower and she's washing his back and she's kind of carrying the conversation because he had had a brain injury and didn't talk a lot. And she said, well, what kind of music do you like? And all of a sudden he kind of rattles out rock and roll. And she's like, yeah, rock and roll. Okay, we can do rock and roll. So she started bringing him in some music every day and, and she brought in some old rock and roll. Well, come to find out, he actually used to be a roadie for like um, Joe Walsh uh, back in the day, you know, like he used to hang out with Joe Walsh and, and he was a roadie and kind of hung out with all those old rock and rollers. And you know who Joe Walsh is, right? Tell me you know who Joe Walsh is. Eagles. I got to say no. Okay. Eagles. Okay. Eagles. I, I know who the Eagles are. I didn't know who Joe yeah. was. Sorry. So, <laughs> so anyways, she started bringing in music and he started singing to the music, to the old rock and roll. He knew all the old songs. And then she started bringing in new music and he started memorizing those songs. And, and it was really the engagement that was just helping him to get better. And, and his well being became better. He, he came, was, getting better as a whole person because he was having great engagement on things that really mattered to him. Mm -hmm. um, companionship, just that general companionship. And I say sometimes when, and this is why I say it takes a while to build a relationship is that, you know, sometimes somebody's coming in and, and they might, I've had people say, oh, no, I didn't like her. And I said, well, would you just try her for a couple more weeks? And she goes back in for a couple more weeks. And before you know it, they won't have anybody else but her. It takes a while to build a relationship, and that's true for all of us. It takes takes time to build a relationship. Um, personal care. We can help with personal care. That's anything from bathing, dressing, like we talked about. The things that you did this morning, light housekeeping, changing your bed linens, throwing in a load of laundry, meal preparation, grocery shopping. Um, we work in tandem often with um, hospice uh, or we work in tandem with home health to help them meet their goals. So if you need to do some exercises, we're there to support you through those exercises. Um, we can do life enrichment. We do provide respite care. So if somebody, if you are a caregiver, respite care is very important because if you can, if you're providing all the care and you're burning yourself out, it, it, it takes away your ability to be a great caregiver. You need to have time for yourself to rejuvenate. So we can provide respite care. We, um, 
we support chronic diseases. We have Alzheimer's and dementia care. We, we have Parkinson's care. We, we have done a lot of education with APDA for our caregivers on Parkinson's. Um, we do transportation, we can do medication reminders and pet care. So who said feeding the birds this morning? You know, we can help fill the bird feeders, feed the dog, take the dog on the walk. So we can do all those kinds of things to support someone. So, uh, go ahead. How does someone know, what are the signs, I guess, that someone may need to think about home care? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. And it, it's when somebody might be spending a lot of time alone, their appearance is declining, they're losing weight, they're not, um, they're not communicating very well any longer with you. They're not taking their medications as prescribed. They, um, they might be experiencing more falls or trouble managing the bills. You might see stacks of bills, stacks of things starting to pile up. Um, and you know, sometimes people can easily get called a hoarder, but in reality, when you have a walker and you have a newspaper and the recycle bin's out there and there's three steps down to get to the recycle bin, you end up just stacking things because the challenge of actually physically doing it is happening. And, and so those are signs to like check out what, what's happening there. Maybe you're missing appointments or you're, um, you'll see that they might be confused or forgetful. Um, and oh, what was my other one? This is a key one. Would they know what to do in an emergency if you were not there? So the house is on fire. Would they know to call 911 and could they get themselves out of the building? You know, those are, those are key things to look for. And I'll tell you, you know, looking back on a few things with my mother, when I think back on it, um, she gave me a few of these signs and I didn't pick up on them. And I didn't have enough knowledge at the time that that was happening. Um, and plus she's my mom or, you know, I could see it if it were my partner as well. It's like, you live with someone every day, you don't quite pick up on those things as fast, but my mother never left the bathroom without having her hair done and her makeup on. And when she stopped doing that, that should have been my first sign. Um, you know, those little things that we think are, are it's just who are, who are they as a person and you know them best, right? Everybody knows them best. So that's, do you have any questions about that? I think those are some of the main signs. Right, so there's, there's the, the I, what I take away is there's sort of two components. There's the, there's the maybe family member recognizing that someone needs a little assistance at home right. or a lot of assistance as it may be. And right. there's also that respite option. There, there is a caregiver recognizing that they are, they need some time away. They, they're holding the burden down um, of everything because their, their loved one requires more of their, their care. And so, so figuring out how be, going to somebody and feeling comfortable that, okay, I can have some time away to recharge my batteries. Right. And, you know, the old oh, build respite care program, and, and that is one thing that APDA has done well. You had a respite program, and now I believe you have a, a fund that they can use for respite care. Is that yes, right? A, a scholarship program, yeah. That we, scholarship that they can, program. They can use that money to pay for respite care, yes. For respite care, right? Mm -hmm. And that and that's so good. What I realized when we were doing the res respite program with APDA, though, is that they didn't want to use that money because they wanted to hold on to it like the golden the egg. Emergency, you know? yeah, mm -hmm. right. And it, it's a little about you and I were having a conversation about your road trip this morning, Jen, and you were talking about how you're gonna you're gonna take two hours, you're gonna switch every two hours for the driver, right? And why are you gonna do that? to keep our batteries charged so we can just keep going down the road, yep. Right, right, mm -hmm. instead of waiting until you're completely exhausted and have nothing left to give, you're gonna recharge your batteries every two hours, get out, stretch, and that's the same kind of thing with respite care. You're gonna get out, you're gonna stretch, you're gonna have, have lunch, you're gonna have some talk, a talk with a friend, you're gonna go for a walk, you're gonna recharge your batteries. So, yeah. And Sean, we have a couple questions from the uh, attendees. And okay. can you clarify about respite home care? 
can that be is like what's the time limitations are there just can it be for just a few hours or can somebody also have it for several days yeah, I, you can. You can you can have it for any amount of time you want, whatever you're willing to do. And you know what I find is somebody might say they want respite care for two hours, and I always try to say, please, please do more than two hours because two hours is not enough time to really fully feel the benefit of respite care. Can, is there an eight-hour day that you could take? Is there a week you want to take off and have somebody come in and provide 24/7 care for you? So you could really step away and decompress. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm on vacation, it takes me the first four days to decompress. Um, but even if you're gonna do it on a regular basis, take longer than two hours, a minimum of four hours, and I would say eight hours would be a great time because you'll never, you know, the first hour you're kind of shuffling around and getting out of there. By the time you drive somewhere, you have lunch, you go run one errand, your day is gone. It's eight hours and you're, you gotta have time to drive back. So I kind of encourage people to take a longer if they can. Any respite is good, but a little longer is gonna help fill your batteries. And then uh, what about a situation where the caregiver has physical limitations? Can they themselves, can they still get help for their loved one? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we care for couples all the time. And sometimes, and I, I try to say this too, that, you know, just having a little bit of care to, to let us take care of the things that are really challenging and wear you out the most so that you have the energy to do the fun things. So if it's really challenging for you to help your partner get a shower in the mornings, you know, bring us in to help get the shower going, get the, get the day started, get breakfast made for both of you, you know, let us, let us take care of that big bulk of what wears you out the most. And then you have a little more energy for the other things that are pleasurable during the day. Did that and answer of course, that one question? Of the, one of the, uh, you did. Uh, one of the other big questions on everybody's mind too, and you may be coming up with this, but um, who pays for this and does Medicare cover home care? Well, it, home care is typically paid for privately. VA, the veterans do have some benefits. I know there is a respite program for, uh, if you're a veteran right now through Sound Generations, there's a respite program um, and that's in Seattle. Uh, the Medicare is going to pay for it. I'm right now more than ever in our time of owning home care, we are being looked at as essential workers and we are essential workers and they're, they're understanding the value of having home care. When I talked about not going back to the hospital, they're understanding how much money it's actually gonna save them if you don't go back to the hospital. So I think overall, Medicare is going to pay for it. It's just a matter of time at this point. And isn't there, um... Didn't Washington State pass something, it's not implemented about paying for home care. So I have yeah. two questions, but that was the first one. Yes, yes. Well, I'm also gonna say one I forgot is, if you have long-term care insurance, long-term care insurance- That was my second one. <laughs> long-term care insurance will also pay for, um, if you need help with your ADLs, and those are the things we talked about at the, top, at the beginning of the talk, what are the ADLs? If you need assistance, so I think it's with at least three of those, uh, they, will, they will assist you with coverage for long-term care insurance if you have it in your plan. Um, yes, there is a program where people are paying into now a long-term care program where, uh, I, but you have to pay into it, I think, for five years to receive any of the benefits back, but that money will be used towards home care. If, can be used towards home care. If someone is on Medicaid, does that cover home care? Yes, yes. It doesn't with us. We are a private pay company, but there are companies, if you have a social worker and you're on Medicaid and you need assistance with the ADLs or certain things, they can work out setting you up with a company that can provide um, Medicaid home care for you. Mm -hmm. Medicaid covered home care co for yeah. you. Good, good, thank you for asking yeah. me that. And I know that there's also a, uh, a respite 
service, not service. There's a program called Lifespan Respite that yes. you yeah. can apply to and get respite care covered yes. um, as long as you're not getting another kind of benefit. So there are, yes. there are resources to help pay for home care, yes. but the majority is private pay. Correct. And yeah. we're partners with Lifespan Respite as well, mm -hmm. which is a really good thing. It, and that's a thousand dollars. That's a thousand dollars a year, I believe, is the benefit if you get chosen for that program. And I, I think it is a little bit of a lottery on that program. I can't quite recall, but I think it's a little bit of a lottery. With the VA program that uh, when the respite care with them, that is a wonderful benefit because I believe that one is a thousand dollars a month. Wow. I'm going. I, I got to double check that number, but I think that's what it is. But mm -hmm. that's when well, you mentioned APDA's care. patient aid scholarship program. And we also, uh, just so people that are watching understand, it's an easy application and um, it is a budget. There is a budget for it. So we it's first come, first serve, but we will provide scholarships for up to $300 a year. And you can use that to pay for home care or transportation or any a multiple multitude of other things but yeah. it is available to people that apply yeah it's a great great program you guys always have put out great programs like that and great support and education thank you it looks like there's a couple other questions is that true Kirsten there is um, one question is dealing with COVID um, how are home care agencies dealing with that how are you managing different caregivers coming in and out, um, and then just caregivers exposure versus the people at home's exposure? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And um, one that, you know, we take, um, I will just say COVID has been on the top of everybody's mind, right? It's, it's one of the most important things that's happening right now. And um, we take the health and well-being of our clients and our caregivers to the utmost importance. And we strive to provide the, you know, the absolute best possible care that we can in these times while still adhering to the CDC guidelines and the Washington State guidelines. Um, we, you know, we've gotten really creative. Um, we've done a lot of virtual intakes. We've done Zoom meetings with family members. We've done social distancing. We've done errands and drop-off deliveries for people who didn't want us to come into their homes. For those that when we're coming into our homes, we are adhering to a face covering policy. Um, we do wellness checks every day for caregivers before going on to a shift. Um, we are, we've spent a lot of time educating our caregivers and communicating and communicating has really been a key piece of keeping it all together, right? There's been so much information coming at us from everywhere, but uh, I think we're all doing the best that we can. Um, does it guarantee that you're not going to get COVID? No, there's no guarantees. But we put everything into place that is required by us, by the CDC and state of Washington. Um, another question is, uh, my wife, I'm just going to read it here. My wife has had PD for over 31 years and is in late stage. I'm st I still have to provide care, but I'm concerned about when I'll not be able to do that, to do all that she needs. What resources do I contact to make sure uh, Medicaid will cover these costs as we survive only on Social Security? there is a process of going through and applying for Medicaid. And, you know, I think it's really important to understand what the Medicaid rules are. And I'll give an example of this, which is, um, you know, if you decided I'm gonna give away all my money to apply for, so I can apply for Medicaid, that would actually disqualify you from Medicaid um, because they do a five year look back. So I, an example was my brother was going to buy my parents' home for $200,000, but my parents live on 80 acres and it's actually worth $650,000. So had he done that, and you know, and they were just doing it to try to keep them living where they were, 
had he done that, it would have actually disqualified them for Medicaid should they need it at some point. So it's, it's really good to understand the rules of Medicaid. You, it's, it's unfortunate because sometimes you do have to be at a certain level of assets in order to be eligible for it. And I have people who can help you with that. Um, I have to think of who they are. I'd have to go back and think about who could help you with that, but we could certainly introduce you to somebody that would be much more knowledgeable about that than I am. I also think having an elder law attorney um, on board is really helpful as well because they can help assess where you are and what you should be doing and if you need to put money into a trust, et cetera. And we, we've partnered with some really excellent elder law attorneys. Um, so. I'm not a Medicaid specialist, so I don't want to talk about, I can just tell you that be careful that you don't um, make yourself ineligible for it. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, one of the reasons why we do this program, what triggers me is, is, and the question is you thinking about what are the coming years going to bring? And Parkinson's is unpredictable as we know, but we all need to think about that as we age, regardless of whether we have a chronic illness right. or something. So thinking right. about these issues and really looking at them before it's an emergent situation is, is really the key, which is why we do educational programs like this, which is why we try to, you know, make sure that people have the resources they need to have these conversations and to have a plan. Right. And I'll, I'll just say, add on to that, which is one of the things I always try to say is bring in care before, long before you think you need it. Because even if you're bringing it in for a few hours a week, four hours, one time a week, you are starting a relationship with a company and, you, and, and it's gonna be a lot easier when somebody needs to help somebody with a shower that you ha have met and they're not just walking in there and saying, okay, let's get you in the shower. You know, it's, it's a, that's a challenging thing and, and it's humbling for everybody. You know, I experienced it recently with my mother-in-law, you know, it's like, I've given a lot of showers in the day, um, but when I was helping her when she came home from the hospital, you know, she said, this is very humbling. And, and, I, and I, what I said to her was like, okay, listen, if I haven't seen it before, I am not gonna know what it is, so let's just not worry about it. And, you know, we had a couple of laughs and we did get past that moment, but it's humbling. It, it, but it's, it's a little easier to do that with someone you've already started a relationship with, that you, that you know that you feel comfortable and safe with. Sure. So I always try to say, you know, plan ahead, have a relationship with a company ahead of time before that emergency situation and when you're scrambling and then everything turns into not what you had planned. The more planning you do, the more success you're gonna have at having the, um, the last part of your, your years the way you want them to be. And, you know, and I'm gonna just, kind of jump in and say this, you know, it's like so what I believe is important about home care is that it, it really supports someone in having their independence. We're, we're there to support you in being independent. We're not there to take over and take away your independence. We're there to support you in being independent. And so how can we do that? We're also there to have a second set of eyes so that we can set, assess if there's other needs. It's really nice to get a second set of eyes sometimes or just see a different way that somebody does it. You know, we were experiencing that with my, my mother-in-law, you know, one of us was doing it this way, one of us was doing it that way, and then we go, oh, that's a better way to do it, that's easier, that's simpler. You know, it, it's a second set of, second person to kind of see that. And the other part is, we're just there to improve your overall health and physical, mental, and spiritual being. Um, you know, we, we improve nutrition and hydration through, through meal preparation and group planning and meal, meal shopping, sorry, shopping and meal planning, I can't talk, um, medication compliance and through engagement. Those are ways that we can support you as a whole person, not just as we are coming in to help you go to the bathroom. That's not what it's about. It's supporting you as a whole person. And home care can also really help you avoid hospitalization and readmissions. If you've come out of the hospital, help you from prevent you from going back to the hospital. Uh, you know, it's our goal to help you achieve your goal, whatever that might be. 
And maybe, maybe it is your goal to just get up and go see the tulips. We can do that with you. We can take you to go see the tulips. Maybe you want to go to the opera. Maybe you want to go grocery shopping, but have some help doing it. We can do that with you. Those are things we can help you do on your own, or we can do them for you. Um, um, the question that came in in the chat, and it is actually related to the question that I wanted to ask, which is um, there are licensed home care companies, and then there is hiring of a private caregiver. And the question from the chat is, do you have to provide the caregiver at 1099 and pay taxes? So I think that's related. So why would you look at hiring a company versus finding a private caregiver? Right, so this is this is a pet peeve for me. So uh, you can just pull me off my soapbox when, okay. when we're you running want out of to. time. So we're gonna we're gonna keep your soapbox short. <laughs> okay. So what I'll say to you is, what I don't like to see is somebody becoming an accidental employer at the most vulnerable time of their life, and that's what happens when you hire a private caregiver, especially if you've hired them off of Craigslist or you don't know where they're coming from. You don't have a really good solid reference for them. But what I'll tell you about a, a licensed home care company in the state of Washington, they do references, they do background checks, they do ex, um, extensive background checks. They, they do both uh, felony and misdemeanors, and they do driving record background checks. They do fingerprinting. We do formal training. With our caregivers in particular, we've put on conferences, we do ongoing education, we have a big training education, probably one of the biggest in the state of Washington, Washington, truthfully. We pay for payroll taxes, we pay their payroll, we have backup caregivers. If somebody can't show up, you don't have to worry about what are you gonna do, we have backup caregivers. We have supervisors that supervise our caregivers and coach them along and help them to be better caregivers. We have a team in the office of 13 people at our office that support, our job is to support caregivers with resources and education and anything they need. We are insured, we are bonded. Um, when you don't hire a, a company, you are putting yourself at risk. I, we were down lobbying um, and I will tell you, I, I listened to um, one of the home care owners that I was, lobbying with talking about the fact that a gentleman had called him and said the caregiver had stole five thousand dollars from him and his heart dropped and then he realized the guy had hired the caregiver off of craigslist it wasn't one of his caregivers and there was nothing he could do about it he helped him file a police report and he then hired the home care company but that five thousand dollars was gone that's a risk you put put yourself yeah. at so yeah. it's, the li it's really the liability and having that infrastructure around you. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. You know, do we have There's time? One. Just, oh, oh yeah. Ahead. We have a few more seconds. Well, I think at least one more, at least one more, at least one more question, question yes, exactly. which might be a good one to end on. If um, so, you, with a little help, Sean, offers services in King and Snohomish County, correct? Um, where would somebody who lives outside of that, where do you recommend they go to look for a licensed agency? Yeah. Where do they get good recommendations? So I, I'm going to say that we, we provide um, services in King, South, uh, Snohomish, and Pierce County. So we cover all three counties. Um, if you need a home care company and you can't find one, you can always reach out to me and I'll happily refer you to somebody or you could go to waka.org, which is w-a-h-c-a.org. I'll put it in the chat for you. Um, but that's, that is a, and that's one of the questions I would also ask when you're hiring a home care company is, do you, I mean, the question to me is, um, I'm just putting this in the chat here. Oh, I just did it for you. Oh, there you go. Um, the One of the things is, is that, you know, are they a member? If you're hiring a home care company in Washington State, I would ask them if they are a member of the Washington Home Care Association. And I'm not just saying that because I'm the president of that association. I'm saying that because the home care companies that are members of that association, what I know about them is they're in good standings with the Department of Health. They are coming to our education programs. They're learning how to be better home care companies, how to treat their caregivers, and they're, they're, they're held accountable. You know, we, we are a team, we grow together, we're elevating the, 
the home care comp companies in the state of Washington. And so I would ask him if they're a member of the Washington Home Care Company. I mean, are there, so are there, because there's a couple people from elsewhere in the country on this call, are there other similar associations throughout the country? Is there a national thing? Yes, um, yes. so yes. the Washington Home Care Association is the state chapter of the Home Care Association of America. And um, actually, when you go to our website, and if you go to find a home care company, it's going to take you to the national site of uh, the Home Care Association of America. And I'm going to, I'll put that in a chat for you too. I did and it already. That, <laughs> oh, you, you're so fast. I'm fast. <laughs> um, that will help you find a provider if you're somewhere out of the state of Washington, for sure. You know, and one of the things I, I didn't get a chance to loop on, but which is, you know, when you're going to set up care, you're going to be asked to, to do an intake, which is, can be really good if the power of attorney, the power of health, the caregiver, the client receiving care can all be there because you are going to ask, be asked to sign a service agreement, put a deposit down. Um, and, and the most important part of that whole meeting is going to be about writing a care plan that's helping you set up the care that you deserve and that you that you want and create a care plan that works for you to achieve the goals you want to achieve to be independent great great so let's move towards a conclusion here do you want to um summarize a little bit just to do a quick wrap up of home care versus home health and and then I can tell folks about what's coming up next. Sure. So uh, again, I would just kind of say that we can provide home care or home health wherever you call home. If that's an assisted living, independent living, your private, private home that you've been in for the last 50 years, an apartment, it doesn't matter where you live, we can provide home care. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, home care is really all, we're helping you with all of your activities of daily living, whatever that may be, whatever you did this morning to get ready, bathing, dressing, eating, grocery shopping, light housekeeping, transportation, those are all the things we can help you do at home. Home health is going to be something that's ordered by a physician and you are getting therapies for. So it's physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, um, a social worker, a nurse, and those are very short-term visits for short periods of time. Okay, and, great. So thank you. Um, we are also, you will receive in your email, um, you will receive, a, Sean's going to put together a little cheat sheet um, for you of the difference of home health versus home care. I probably should have said that at the beginning for those of you that maybe were madly taking notes. <laughs> um, but you know, it helps you learn. Um, this, the recording of this will also be put up on our YouTube channel, probably towards the end of next week. Um, and I will, that's when you will get your follow-up email and we'll have a link to that. I will also send you, um, the palliative care roadmap that Sean was a part of creating. It's a really great resource about what the heck is palliative care which yeah. we may want to do another program on later down the line, because that is definitely something that uh, folks are curious about. And there is a yeah. movement for that. There's uh, also, I just will mention, there's a dementia road care map as well. I'll send, I'll try to send you the link for that if I can find it too. Right. That's also very wonderful. They're very yeah. great resources. Um, so I want to thank you for joining us today. Um, I hope this was informative. Um, when you exit the program, there will be a link that pops up to a survey. It's a very short survey, um, but it helps, helps us make our programs better. Um, so please give us some feedback about that. And then what kind of things do you want to hear in this kind of program? Because we will be continue to do these on a monthly basis. Next month on November 13th, so it'll be another Friday at 1030, um, we will be welcoming a neuro-ophthalmologist named Dr. Hamilton, and he is going to talk about eye issues in Parkinson's disease and what you do about them. And then our December program is Friday, December 11th at 1030, and it is going to be about sleep and fatigue in Parkinson's disease. 
with um, APDA's medical director and vice president, Dr. Rebecca Gilbert, who's pretty great. Um, so uh, that's what's coming up. Um, thank you very much, Sean, for a very informative discussion. Um, thank you, Kirsten, for ans asking all the questions and moderating. And thank you to those of you who attended. And feel free to share this information when you get the post-event email to anyone you think could benefit. Um, um, yes, ma'am. Any last I, words? I just wanted to say I put my contact information in the save chat. And if I can be a resource, one of the things I think I do best is being a resource for somebody. Or if you have home care questions, we'd be more than happy to help you with home care. Yeah. Thank you. Sean's a great Thanks connector. for having me. Yeah, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. So, um, everyone, oh, I see a question in the chat. Oh, just a thanks. Oh, Good. Just thank so, you. We're just getting some thank yous. Um, thank so, you. thank, thank you, you very everybody. Much. Enjoy your fall weekend, and um, we'll see you again at another program. And don't hesitate to reach out to us if we can assist, provide referrals, or help, help answer questions. So, thank you very, very much. Bye-bye, everybody. everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. We need some eagles.